Hello and welcome back everybody to Clannard. So, I just had a borderline heart attack. I opened up Clannard. I looked at something in my uh, YouTube channel, I surfed a bit on the internet and suddenly there was like loud music coming out of my headphones. I was like, what the fuck did I just open? And it turns out if I leave uh, Clannard unseen long enough, it will show me its intro sequence, which I have never seen before. I nearly died. <laughs> but the intro sequence is actually cool. I, I actually, I think next episode I'm going to show that in the beginning of the episode. So, anyway, anyway, let's concentrate on the novel again, shall we? Oh, it's fine. We really do want to join the club. What? Ah, you suddenly changed his opinion, okay. Oh, it's fine. We really do want to join the club when we find an advisor. But after we get one, we'll suddenly decide that we don't like the club and quit. Ah, okay, this is his plan. Actually, that makes sense. In our place, you can find new members who want to join. Okay? Just to think of it like that. You're gonna recruit new students and find them yourself, you idiot. Furukawa's pay slows. Uh, come on, this is actually also, now I, I, um, I said I'm not going to complain about Tomoya as much and I'm really trying, I'm really going to try also in this episode. But I can complain about Nagisa, it's not okay that she actually tries to pressure him into her drama club only she, she wants to do it, only because she wants to do it badly. Like this is really like guilt pressuring into it, him into it, you know. I use my hand to hold back Sunohara, who has started grumbling to himself. Then I move my face close to the tip of Furukawa's shoulders. Listen, I think you're getting our story mixed up with how you actually feel. What? Just forget it. Let's focus on finding an advisor for now. Was that a reference? I, I assume it was a reference, because it made no sense in this context. She picks up her pace again. I, fi I find it interesting, by the way, as mentioned, I don't know a lot of Japanese, but like uh, one or two basics. They actually like wakarimashita, like I understood or something like that. They always translate it more in a way that uh, it, it would be used in English than just literally translating it to I understood, you know. So, just an interesting note. We grab a teacher we recognize and ask, ask if he knows which teacher used to be the drama club advisor. Yeah, I know him well, but I never knew that he was the drama club advisor. I guess that makes sense though. The club really must have been low key. Where is he? I look around the teacher's room, but he's nowhere to be found. Yeah, that's not nice to say, really. Maybe she has a good influence on them. Furukawa says the words with confidence. They seem to allocate a response as a number of teachers suddenly turn our way. Many of them look suspicious, but when they make eye contact with me, they cheerfully go back to whatever it was they were doing before. <laughs> well, I doubt that, but okay. She ends the conversation by thanking the teacher. Yeah, completely different experience. Let me try, when was I ever in the teacher's room? Yeah, a few times, but usually to bring stuff into it. And usually when I got yelled at, never in the teacher's room. I don't know if that is a thing exclusive to Japan, or just a thing not happening in Germany, but I, I think, like, the teacher's room is 
the private space of the teachers. You don't bring students there and students there and yell at them, you know. He slams his foot into the door. Cut it out, we are leaving. To the guidance counselor's room, of course. Right, Furukawa? As soon as we turn around, we see Komura just as he exits the guidance counselor's office. Lucky! Nice timing, Yoboji! Hey, Gramps! Doing well? Hmm. He turns his deeply wrinkled face in our direction. Well, like to be fair, like in real human wrinkle level, this is nothing. <laughs> Komura was my homeroom teacher during my first year here. It's thanks to him that I was able to make it this far in school without incident. Ah, so he is cool, that is cool. Wow, what a sentence. He is cool, so that is cool. Come on. I push Furukawa in front of Komura. We want to bring the drama club back, Grams. Big, right? Come on, won't you do it? This reaction is really getting on my nerves. Sonohara seems to be getting impatient too, as he puts his hand on Komura's head and tries to force him to not. He lets go. What's the matter, Grams? Just say it. Oh god, I hope I don't have to remember that name, I already forgot. But why would I need to remember? But maybe that would actually be like a cool choice. Like we're standing in front of the door. Who are we supposed to talk to again? Like, uh, did you actually pay attention to the dialogue kind of choice? <laughs> On the other hand, that could be cheated easily, I mean, I mean I can go backwards in the texts. But you know, Furukawa hurriedly agrees without even hearing the details. She must want to separate Sonohara and Kom Komura as fast as possible. I guess it's su Komura, Komura, Komura. It sounds more Japanese like Komura. I should have listened to the, to the teacher. She said his name, I think. Oh well. Can you at least tell us what class she's in? Okay, I appreciate it. Okay, Grams, you're really not helpful. I see why they call you Grams. We leave the elderly teacher behind with a variety of parting words. Just as we reach the top of the staircase, we hear the first bell signaling the end of lunch break. Oh, we've already spent that much time. We must have been so engrossed in what we were doing. Guess we'll do the rest after school. I hope you don't forget us something. It's now the class after lunch. Since it's right after lunch, I'm overtaken by sleepiness. I space out. My teacher's voice almost sounds like a lullaby. It feels like my eyelids are almost closed. Thud. Huh? Something hit my head. When I look down at the floor, I see a small piece of an eraser. 
I'd assume because Kyo did that before, it must be Kyo. But doesn't she have, like, lessons right now? Oh. I guess that is a normal way of communicating. Like, I never threw... I mean, did they throw, like, pieces of rubber? I can't remember that well, to be honest. I mean, there, there was a lot of throwing stuff, but usually it was to hurt each other. The pinnacle of that was chalk. I was never, I was, like, this was the most stupidest thing they did in school. Like, I have nothing against boys being boys and beating each other up a little bit, you know, that's, that's like normal. As long as it isn't good fun, of course. But like, throwing chalk, chalk at each other, you know? Like, with full speed, full power, I'm still amazed that nobody's blind. What is it? I was just about to fall asleep. Outside? Oh, this fucking pig. What is? <laughs> yeah, I love it too, though. I love it too. What does he mean? With my eyebrows still frowned from my sleepiness, I tilt my head to peek outside the window. There at the school gate. Of course, given the time, there's no way there's anybody there. Huh? I think I just caught a, glim caught a glimpse of something. It looks like a tiny animal moving around on small steps. It's rubbing its body against the gate wall and happily wiggling its tiny tail. Botan. It's Kyo's pet. If I remember correctly, it's a small baby boar. I mean, it's not that long ago. Is it here to see Kyo again? Hey, listen. Oh, whoops, excuse me. Listen, this man is a visual novel slash anime protagonist. He's sitting in the back, on the left side. Obviously he's staring out of the window. And I mean at the same time, he's even like the one student that doesn't pay attention. He qualifies. Like he actually qualifies to look out of the window. An irritating voice suddenly shouts at me. I look at the teacher with my eyebrows still frown due to my sleepiness. How is he? That, that is an argument I never understood. I, I'm talking a lot this episode, but I can't help it. Like, this is a never an argument I never got. Like, if a student doesn't pay attention, like, then it's the student's uh, own fault, you know? And I mean, they're on the last year of high school. If it was, like, something in, in middle school, I'd say, okay. But if you're, like, 17 or 18 or 16 or whatever, and you're not paying attention in class, man... Your fate is in your own hand. If you want to fail so badly, please give it a go. Did he just throw something at the teacher? Without saying a thing, I leave the classroom amidst the silence. After a short while, I can hear the voice of the teacher coming from the classroom attempting to smooth things over. I let out a sigh, then walk down the hallway, even though it's class time. Oh, so he actually threw shit at him. Well, I said I'm not complaining. I am in the garden next to the school gate. There is no one else here. I can faintly hear the noise of a PE class coming from the fields on the other side of the school building. Aside from that, it's completely quiet here. Amid the silence, there's a baby boa brushing its body and nose against the gate wall and wagging it or waging its tail. Botan. As I call him, his tail stands up and responds. Which tail? I mean, in reality, I might have a tail, but here is definitely no tail. But look at this thing. This thing is so cute, I can't even handle it. Like, whoever came up with that design... Like, this is the best design in the whole game, by far. <laughs> he then quickly walks toward me on his short legs, like a fast forwarding video. Like, I was asked in the comments if I am, I'm going to watch the anime. I think I, uh, only for this fucking boa I have to watch the anime, just to see him walk animated. It seems he remembers me. Huh? Hey! Ow! Botan dashes and rams into me. 
There's really not much of an impact since he's so small, but stop it. Hey, are you okay? <laughs> Brain damage, but self-inflicted. They do say that boars are reckless rushes, but... Wow, it's true. Nah, I'm not praising you. Okay. I sit down on the grass cross. On the grass crosslet. Hmm? Botan looks at me, almost as if there's something he wants. He wanders around and sniffs in front of me and wiggles his tail. He peeks at me. And then he starts wandering again. He repeats the process several times. Then he walks toward me as if he's made his decision. Oh? He sticks his nose between my legs and sniffs. I grab Botan by his back and hold him up to eye level. I... I wonder if boas actually... I mean dogs do shit like this. But I mean a boa? On the other hand, if it smells there, maybe a boa comes smelling there too. He frenetically wiggles his short legs in the air. What the hell were you trying to do there? For Christ's sake, you're an animal! And you're hitting on a human? Hell, actually... What are you even? A guy? A girl? If you're a guy, I'm making a stew out of you. Yeah, because it's worse being hom a homosexual, hum homosexual human than being an animal who wants to fuck humans. Apparently that is worse. <coughs> the fuck? <laughs> All of a sudden I can feel that something is coming toward me. Oh, of course. Cure to rescue. Almost instinctively, my upper body leans to the right. At that very moment, something cuts through the air with a swoosh by my left ear. Then a, su then a thud sound follows from the ground. Um... A kanji dictionary? I turn around, thinking it can't be it. I'm looking at the place I have in mind. Class 3's room on the third floor. It is right next to my classroom. There I can see Kyo clearly surrounded by a menacing aura. <laughs> yeah. Seriously? I look at the dictionary, which has a car which has carved a crater into the ground, and let Botan go. You can throw this at that distance? If I was actually hit by that, I would have died. Hell, if I didn't dodge it, it would have hit me. Please, please. Despite my state of mind, Botan, now liberated, comes close to me again to sniff around. This time he quietly qu climbs on up my lap and sits there. And he seems awfully happy about it. Looks like he found a place where he feels comfortable. Even so, he found it by sniffing. Maybe you have something in your pocket. I don't know. I turn back to look. Far away, Kyo nods an acknowledgement. In any case, I start patting his back. His tail wiggles happily. Since it's cute, I kept doing it for a while. Fifth period's over, huh? At the school building, the sounds of liveliness that were absent during class begin. During class, begin to displace the silence. Botan, who was asleep in my lap, seems to have noticed and starts wag waging his tail. I'm really unsure if it's if it's wagging or waging. Probably it's wagging. Double G, I guess. Yo, you awake? My guess is that your owner's going to be here in a bit. Sounds like she is coming. I hear footsteps coming toward me from behind. Please. Huh? What's wrong? Please. Please. Suddenly, Botan's body begins to tremble, as if he's afraid of something. Sitting on my lap, he drops his ear like a dog. Uh, uh -huh. Hmm. Is he afraid of uh, Ryo? That is actually an interesting twist of terms. <laughs> Uh, not of terms, uh, an ancient, an interesting twist of um, ah, god damn it, events. There we go, uh, an interesting twist of events. I turn around, and it's the younger sister who's here. Yo, what's up? I mean, as mentioned, he's seventeen, eighteen something. Uh, 
It's his deal. I find it just a bit concerning that he threw stuff at the teacher. Or at least it seemed so. Oh, that, huh? It's not like I actually listen in class anyway. I was so bored, so this actually is perfect. That aside, this thing is yours, is your family's, right? He probably came here to see Kyo. Its body has been shaking all over since just now. What's going on? Huh? It doesn't like you, huh? So, first of all, I can barely hear you. <laughs> Second of all, you, uh... So are you, like, crazy? Like, deep, deep down, and the animal feels it? Something like that? Or maybe the animal just doesn't like you. She whispers quietly. At that very moment, Botan's body suddenly begins to tremble. Hmm? What's wrong? <coughs> Unlike when Fujibayashi came, he sounds very happy. Botan leaps off my lap and starts running, taking a large detour to avoid Fujibayashi in the process. And over where he's headed, there is... <laughs> Kyo hugs Botan, who had run toward her, and smiles as she walks, as she walks this way. <laughs> Can a boa smile? I doubt it. On the other hand, Botan probably can. She glances at me. Actually, she came to confess her love to me. She couldn't even wait until school is out, so I guess she's actually way bolder than she looks. She becomes flustered as her face reddens. Why are you bullying her too? That's not cool of you. She looks like she's about to cry. By the way, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she says and let out a sigh in amazement. Next to her, Fujibayashi nods her ex exaggeratedly. Her face is still red. Well, you can always get me something. You're kidding. Even if I sleep, it still counts toward my attendance. That is important. So don't just disregard it. Leave it to me! I pound my chest in agreement. Having seen that, Botan oings his nose happily. Hmm, what is it? I don't listen in class anyway, so it doesn't matter. So she says, what should we do, Onechan? You're picking a fight, aren't you? Hmm? Yeah, I guess. What about the pick then? Should we just leave him here? Leave him be until class is over? Class is going to start. Hearing the bell chime, Fujibayashi begins to become flustered. Botan wiggles his tail as she watches her. Kyo takes a breath as she steps forward. You're taking him with you. Isn't that kind of bad? 
ぬいぐるみよ。ブヒーブヒー What the hell is that? Good question. ボタンの7つゲーム1つは<笑>ブヒーボタンはい Oh, amazing! And now he looks really like a plushie. And they only made that by drawing his eyes different. <laughs> Botan's body freezes on Kyo's mark. He then stays that way without moving in the slightest. At a lone blink, it doesn't even seem like he's breathing. Don't tell me you're taking him back to class with him acting like a plush. <laughs> it kinda is, I gotta be honest. You're a moron. There's no way he can stay for the, that way for 15 minutes. Wow. <laughs> I wonder why he likes you and not Ryo. Like, that sounds actually not that good. That's animal cruelty. It is really going to be okay acting like a plushie. She says and squeezes Botan into my chest. Uh. What do you mean? You're kidding. I, 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 I'm personally on his side, like, uh, no. You can't really trust someone who tells you to have faith in them. Throw Botan toward Kyo, take him for now. I mean, <sighs> the fact of, whoops, uh, the fact of the matter is, if I take Botan, it probably gives me some plus points with Kyo. I mean, it looks like I'm like, for now, on the Nagisa road. On the other hand, I'm not sure if I can leave the Nagisa road still. It's, I mean, it's possible. But, if I give her Botan back now, I probably make some big minus points with her. But, no, like, I would never do that. And now, we had a discussion in the comments, I don't try uh, to take, uh, to put myself too much into Tomoya's perspective, but like even out of a, th even out of a lovable thug's uh, perspective, I wouldn't take Botan. Ah uh, no, 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 no! Woo, I misclicked. <laughs> Return to previous choice, yes. Hey, this isn't... Yeah, there we go. Throw Botan toward Kyo. Kyo? Huh? I say to stop Kyo, who was going to walk toward the school building. As she turns around, I throw Botan at her. As she lets out a yell uncharacteristic of a girl, she somehow manages to catch the spinning Botan midair. Nice catch. Although I personally would have done it that way, like I would have handed it over or something. I say with a smile as I give her a thumbs up. He's your pet, no? You take care of him yourself. In that case, I'm sure it wouldn't be a problem if you take him with you. Oh, isn't that weird for a guy to bring a plushie to class in the first place? <laughs> like, this is even so cute, you even like, as a boy in middle school, you could bring it with you and nobody would say a thing. Okay, probably not, but still. You really think so? There's no way in hell I'm bringing him with me. Kyo turns around with a sulky expression and starts walking toward the school building. Oh yeah, these were definitely minus points. <laughs> then, during class. 
I think we made the right decision though. Yeah, you're right. I can hear loud noises coming from the other side of the wall. Perhaps because she noticed what's going on, Fujibayashi keeps looking back and forth between the chalkboard and the wall nervously. Thank goodness I didn't take him. I think from the bottom of my heart. Homeroom eventually ends, meaning the school day is officially over. 2C reads the sign we've all gathered under. The kids inside eye us with suspicion as they get ready to go home. It would be tough to leave your classroom when three upperclassmen are miling around in, in front of the door. Go and talk to her, Furukawa. Sonohara and, uh, Sonohara and I will be waiting here. Hi. She obediently nods and saunters into the classroom. She gets the attention of one of the female students and asks her a question. The girl points toward the window. There I see another girl. Furukawa thanks the first girl, then begins to walk toward the window. Once she does, she starts to talk to the girl there. Sonohara is killing time by picking fights with passing boys. <laughs> He's so ridiculous. I just keep my eyes fixed on Furukawa. She is smiling and moving her hands all over the place as she desperately explains her case. After a bit, it's her turn to listen next. She nods again and again at the girl's words. She strikes me as the quiet type. Eventually, the class empties to the point where then the only two inside. Sonohara asks me a question. Yeah, I guess. We enter in after her. Sonohara greets her in an immediate in God damn it. Ooh, I'm not good today with reading. I'm not good today. Actually, I say that like every other day I'm recording that I'm not good with reading. <laughs> like, that's alarming. Maybe I should re train reading all over. Like, beginning from scrap one or something. <laughs> Sunoha, Sunohara greets her in an intimidating fashion. Sorry to intrude. The girl looks down. So, what's up, Furukawa? What is it? Come on, you can tell me. If I knew what that was. Or is it like a singing club? Like a choir club or something? まだ入部希望者がいなくて、西名さん一人だけだったんですけど、それでもその日から時間をかけて三人集めたんだそうです。西名さんすごく頑張りました。Oh man, then why don't we just partake in the choir club or in the choral club or whatever? It's it's not really about dramas. You have no idea about them. On the other hand, it would be half-assing stuff now. Like, it would be really half-assing stuff now. Like, we actually worked for the drama club. Hmm. I see. I guess that is a problem. Furukawa has her eyes set on mine. I guess we'll try another teacher. I offer a compromise. The Cora Club girl begins to talk, her face still to the ground. Knock it off. Well, I, I wonder, maybe maybe this whole bread thing really doesn't backfire. Like, I still feel it will backfire, but the fact of the matter is it's brought up way less than I expected. 
But it seemed like such bi a big of a deal, you know. She bows her head to the second year student before pushing us out of the class. Finally, someone with a common sense. Hey, you're doing a lot too. You're working like crazy. Uh, okay, that's not really true, but we're we're cheering her up, so I guess it's okay. I know that for a fact. Don't give up. Keep on at it. I'm sure there's something we can do. Listen, you. Yeah, true that. Yeah, it will bite me in the ass eventually. Furukawa watches Sunohara as he walks off. <sighs> Can't believe him. Huh? We've come up completely empty handed. I can't understand what would cause a person to smile in the end despite that. But that's all I need to see. To feel like this day of scrambling around school was worthwhile. I walk down the hill alongside Furukawa. I am Mitsunohara again. What is it? What are you going to do? How? Wow, that really is super cyber. Don't you have internet? Okay, it's 2003. Right. Internet porn is not all over the place yet, I guess. <laughs> I'll start calling you Pornohara Yohe as of tomorrow. I don't dislike it, but I don't know about watching that kind of thing shoulder to shoulder with another guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, flawless logic. Can't argue with that. I appreciate it when others are considerate. But I'm not sure about that. Yes, because Oh no, I don't help him with his porn problems. Sorry, Sunohara, but I'm not really into that kind of stuff. Sunohara walks off alone. <laughs> he comes back. It's more trouble than it's worth. Not particularly. I don't want to have a, to lock a TV and a VCR around. Ask someone else. Sunohara runs off like a child. <sighs> Why don't we go? I look back at Furukawa, who has been standing there quietly. Hi. Good thing she didn't mind all the porn talk. <laughs> I wonder what I missed with all the porn stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man. What the fuck? 
I mean, I know I was spoiled in the comments that there is like, and spoilers if you don't want to know it, like skip 10 seconds ahead or something, or maybe 20. Um, I know that there is a like a gay ending, a gay bad ending or something with Sunohara. I wonder if that, if I would have done this, if that would have actually ended in this bad end. Anyway, please don't tell me in the comments. <laughs> I'm so worried about being spoiled. I'm sorry, but I hate it when I'm being spoiled. Yeah, morning. Furukawa comes up and stands beside me, as she always does. I know, I like your piano always wakes, wakes me up good. I love that piano. I know I say that like every second episode, but I love that piano. No, not that much. I'm not sure concentration is gonna do much for me at this point. I sure don't. What a dull conversation. Still, I can't tell that Furuka I can't tell that Furukawa is trying her hardest to find something to talk about. That's why I don't really mind whether or not the conversation is boring. At least it's a comfortable one. You know, I never asked. Are you smart? I ask her the question as we're part way up the hill. She looks perplexed for a second before answering. She makes it sound like that's just her lot in life. But it's not like you had to repeat a year because your grades were bad. So you can't be that dumb. The entrance exam to this high school isn't exactly e easy either. But you're taking the same classes this year that you took last. That must make them easy, right? Good enough for me. I'll be counting on you when tests come around. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think he talked about cheating, but... Uh, maybe he really was talking about learning together. You can just mo focus on the most important parts. Oh lady, let me tell you, Tomoya is an expert on this, and actually I'm also an expert on this. Like, I, uh, I did whole Latin tests. Like, I passed whole, uh, a whole Latin tests with an A. Only b because I predicted correctly which text the teacher would choose. Like, I was that kind of guy. <laughs> To be fair though, back in the day I was actually really good at Latin. But uh, in that, for that particular test I didn't learn a lot. And I was like, the day before the test, like, shit, I didn't learn. What am I going to do? Okay, like we talked about these, th uh, these three Latin poets. Uh, our teacher probably will take this poet. Which text of this poet did we not translate yet? This is too complicated. This is too easy. Like, this seems a good text. And actually, this this was actually the good text. And uh, this was the right text. Like, I was so amazed by myself and my predicting ability. Seriously? So I can't learn it all in one night? <laughs> if only we were in the same class. Then I'd be able to cheat off of you. <laughs> Probably not. Okie dokie. So, I was asked to make the episodes a bit longer. So I think from now on we set the mark at like around 45 minutes. The thing is, my internet really takes a long time to upload. Like actually a long, long time. Like a 35, 40 minute video takes like... 10 plus uh, hours to upload, so you know, not all that good, not all that good. 
Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. This was like actually, you know, the last episode I was angry. In the episode before that I was angry. Like this episode I only had fun. I had nothing to complain or basically nothing. And I really actually really really enjoyed this episode. So if you believe it or not, I'm concerned also if you enjoy to watch uh, to watch this stuff. And um I'm concerned if I complain too much that you don't enjoy the experience. On the other hand, I don't want to lie about my experience. If I'm annoyed, I don't want to say like, yeah, this is cool, just, just because. But this episode, I just really had fun. So, thumbs up. All right, thank you everybody for watching. Come back for the next episode. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.